Well, how's it going, Kingsman? Welcome back to the NTW3 Battlefield. Today we have a historical battle map. We have Eilau. Now, I do believe, of course, you have the Russians. Now, the Russians are a different, maybe, uh, different thing for this battlefield to be historically accurate. But you do have the Russians on the field. Um, so, you know, somewhat historically accurate. They're using, uh, you know, some Prussian-Russian cores. Uh, I apologize. I do not remember the dates on these. But, uh, yeah, so we have an 8-pointer, a 7-pointer for the Prussians. You have a 12-point Bagration, and um, where's the other one? Where is he? Way in the back, a 9-point Duktorov. Now, I will say this in the very beginning. Don't, don't discredit this replay. There is someone that does drop, but the gameplay, guys, it is so stinking close still. I mean, there's a reason they posted it still. It is insane insanely close at the end so uh you know even when you see that person drop which i'm sure we'll see it at some point it is still gonna make it quite a crazy good game so buckle up guys now we are seeing a progression going in with some dragoons already at the french light cavalry and oh man doing quite well in this charge at first you can see france trying to mobilize the army get them up to the front lines and look at these columns though Kind of cool look. You see that cavalry fighting in the background, in the foreground. French columns, infantry cavalry moving forward. Beautiful map too. Now it does look like Russia has thrown in. Uh, looks like some light cavalry to kind of flank the French cavalry. Now the French are in a bit of a problem here. They're probably sacrifice at least one more cavalry unit just to save some of their cav here because their general even is in danger. As you can see, of being attacked here, man, almost oblivious. I'm surprised they haven't sent some infantry with a square over here to kind of help out here. Now, this Russian Dragoon unit did break, but a Crossier is now going into the thick of it. And maybe some Gasaris to harass this line. I mean, this is a juicy target right here, guys. There's a French General in Skirmisher here. And he just now seems to have realized the danger that he is in. I am so shocked he didn't react to this sooner. Um, unfortunately, they're tired already, so they are not going to get as good of a charge off as they may otherwise have done. But still, this is going to be crazy, crazy if they can kill a French general very early on into this fight. And they may at least break him. Either way, he's going to probably try to run those cavalry out of there. Oh, that's why. He's, oh my gosh. This is why you keep cav by your artillery, guys. That's a way juicier target and France has lost five guns so early on this is sad for France this is very sad for France so they're gonna lose literally their entire gun battery there we go there it is it's all but gone and France won has lost this cat fight against the heavy cap as well too late, too little, too late. France definitely was not expecting or prepared at all for this fast-moving Bagration on this flank. Now, it does look like uh, we're starting to have uh, Bagration even inching up here on the actual city here. France defending some of the streets. They have tons of LOCs they can garrison to defend. Um, artillery, is this artillery firing? No, it's not. And we have not seen anyone drop yet. I actually am not totally sure who drops. I think it's one of the Prussians. By this point, I think so far the Coalition has had very successful uh, fights so far here. Prussia still rolling up with their troops. Man, I haven't seen Prussia in a minute in a replay either. And I do love a Prussia. That does well, you know. That does well. That's a big disclaimer there. They have a lot of heavy cav too. I mean, they're, they have artillery as well. This map definitely is very, very well suited to the artillery side of things. I see six guns by this eight pointer. It's just a question of who's the one that's gonna, you know, who's gonna drop and how is Coalition gonna bring it back to make it so close. And honestly, I don't know who exactly wins or loses yet. Um, but the kills were pretty, pretty darn close on both sides. So you know there was a juicy fight on this side you see already we have some French infantry firing 
on the Russians from up here. You can't even see them, but they are definitely taking shots. I mean, looking at what they can see. Yeah, they can see plenty. But they know exactly what they're defending. Horse artillery is set up. We do have some skirmishers pushing forward. I'm not sure exactly where they're going. French still mobilizing more and more of their army here. Trying to get them in position away from the Russians. They have some light infantry looking to be the reserve line, or not even a reserve line at this point. They're going to be defending the left flank. Russia did catch those skirmishers out, unfortunately. They may have been, they may have been a misclick or just pathfinding issues with all the buildings. It's probably not a ton of fun. But now France is going to be scrambling to defend this side as Bagration is pushing forward with a lot of troops. And you see Prussia even mobilizing. It looks like, in fact, everyone... I guess make sure yet. Uh, everyone is pushing to this right side. This looks like the better side. Bagration seems to have quite a bit of a foothold so far. He has a bit of a flank even going in for the bayonet on some more skirmishers here. So Russia already just doing quite a bit. You see France running troops forward here, but Russia may even close in on this at column. I'm surprised France isn't trying to do a bayonet charge here. To counter charge Russia. Oh yeah, Russia's going straight into this column. Wow! Oh man, this could be a huge, huge push here, guys. I mean, they have a lot of troops a little further back. Some grenadiers, though, in the mix of this second line. The first line of musketeers just kind of shooting on this side. Now, this is a lot of infantry for this one Russian unit to be taking on. So, it may not go very well for them in the long run. But for now, they seem to be doing a decent job. But they need reinforcements and quickly... Even some cavalry, even. Oh, they have some light infantry on the flank. Man, this is not going well. Oh, wow. Even another cav charge. Dragoons charging in against that French cavalry, trying to defend this flank. And now light infantry getting engaged by some French lines. And getting some point blank volleys that may actually break this French line. Either way, France is in a bit of a pickle here, and I would even be pulling back as France. This is this is turning into disaster, disaster alley here, guys. They, oh, what are they doing? Our men are running. France is back charging some of their own lines. They need to pull. France needs to pull back. In this situation, guys, that's the the decision to pull back should have already happened. Pull back. Try to use the LOC. Use some reserves right here. Pull back fall back. They're going to lose their entire left flank here. And you see this infantry just getting caught in a killing zone by the light infantry cavalry just defending that. Already, oh my gosh, that is a mass rout by France. Their left flank has tumbled. That is at least five or six units from France. And you can see those grenadiers from Russia going in for the throat here, trying to break the left flank. So far, things going very well for them. This French line, they need to stack up troops along this river, along this bridge. Even cavalry should be pushing up. I mean, nowhere else. France is actually seem to be advancing along this right flank. So, while the left flank is definitely getting in jeopardy with Prussia now charging in. Russian Dragoon or Grenadiers with some Hussars from Prussia and more infantry. This is looking to be a bit of a rollback. And you see, I think the rest of France is actually falling back here. I think they are leaving this section, they realize there's nothing to do to save the side. Even the French general himself has realized the disaster. And he is in a fight with the coalition already. I think that's him right there. No, that's him. Maybe. Either way, guys, France is in trouble. This French army is definitely in trouble. We're starting to see a Russian, maybe Prussian-backed advance going into the town itself. If they can take this town, that would be a huge, 
huge victory for them. Now we do have the French still pushing on this 8-pointer. So I'm very curious if they are going to make a... They, they really committed to this push. Man. Like, they truly, utterly committed to the right flank here. Which is why this 9-point Russia kind of pushing over to reinforce them. While the higher points, the 7 and 12, keep pushing into the town itself. Now it does appear that the Grenadiers are the ones who are going in for the house melee, trying to take this portion of the city so they can start fighting street by street. Definitely going to do very well, especially since France has taken such heavy losses, even starting to circle around on the right flank here. I keep missing these. Oh! I didn't miss all of them. The artillery from Russia, unfortunately, getting charged by that cavalry. France even... Pushing up a lot closer against the Musketeers with line infantry. You can see tons of reserves here on the flanks. Now maybe France is going to try to go for a melee. I think they're actually going to try to get in close for shooting. With the artillery dead, they can keep pushing and pushing. Um, Prussia is going to probably try to use their heavy cab. Uh, I think we finally have seen the end of this French army on the flank. This LLC is still being fought over, but it looks like the rest of the French definitely have pulled out. They probably are going to try to make a fight for this other side here. Oh my gosh, we have a French bayonet charge just crashing in on this Prussian army. Just absolutely smashing in, breaking them. Look at the flanking charge. Now we do have a heavy cab charge, but they're going to smack into a square here. Now the LLC in the town also got taken. But still, Russia is going up against some squares here and a lot of infantry. And you can see their line just broke out of nowhere. With France massing up in some advancing columns all along the board. Now we do have the 9-pointer helping try to defend their ally who's pulling back his reserve lines, whatever is left of his army. So hey, I mean, no one's dropped yet, guys. No one has dropped yet. Things going very even. I'm sorry, I'm not catching anything or everything. We have Prussia rushing into the house. Now they are getting forced back here. We have a cab charge going against the Prussian troops that are brave enough to push into this town. All right, guys, so while this whole fight was going on, I figured I would uh, back up, not only because it crashed, but because I wanted to do this. Um, back up to where things were happening here. So I missed the beginning chunk of this whole fight here. So we have Prussia pushing into the house. This is before that mass rat ca captured before. And you have Russia and Prussia just really hard pushing into the town. Artillery, two French units is all that is in this house right now. And you can see right here, we have the French charging in. So this is how they started getting the Russians just totally broken up here. And then that cavalry going in to try to help stop this incursion on the coalition side. Still the coalition pushing around on the flank though. The rest of the French still in reserve here. And of course, you still have this big old attack with France continually pushing on poor Prussia who is basically all but gone they have a couple of heavy cab units here War of Russia still in the center horse artillery pushing over to that side and uh, well Russia's gonna have to get into it here with Prussia they both are gonna have to make some big pushes here this artillery definitely may be over this may be the last that we are gonna see of this artillery piece looks like they did capture the other building here so Alao definitely looks to be mostly in control by the coalition. Um, we have more French, along with some French cavalry and infantry, pushing against the Russian lines here. Russia trying to do their best, but it does look like we may have another bayonet charge by France going in, smacking in with some grenadiers now from Prussia. And Prussia just still getting caught up in that mass route. You have more cavalry pushing forward. Um, the crossiers of Prussia trying to defend this left flank. They're going to start getting surrounded, it does look like. And now with Prussia just utterly in collapse. Well, we're going to have a Russia that's going to start pulling back, hopefully, from this fight. Because even though they took this first charge quite well, um, they don't want to lose any advantage they are gaining on this right flank and throw it away. Especially since one of their allies is basically all but dead, guys. I mean, there's not a whole lot left sadly 
and it does appear, yep, that uh, Prussia... I haven't seen anybody crash yet, to be honest, guys. I haven't seen anybody crash. I feel like I got lied to. Pleasant surprise, though. So, you can see Russia trying to throw up some kind of defense. They're trying to stop this mass route that just keeps going. It's France is starting to roll over through Tora. Over on this side, I mean, the coalition seem to be doing quite well still. France retreating with what remains of their left flank to join up with the right flank that is doing so successful. Nice stop, maybe, here by the Russian guard. We have Enoch Force Artillery that is set up as well. Maybe this is where they're going to try to make that stop. This is the stand, guys. They are definitely going to try to make a stand here. And that artillery really starting to do its work. We have some cavalry that's going to defend that horse artillery, throwing up their dragoons. But just like instead, France is trying to focus in on this side where that Russian guard, they are going to be... Well, they're going to be given some uh, very crucial orders here. However, Russia may try to counter charge here, sending in some dragoons, smacking against the French lines. Yep, on both sides, they went in to stop the advance as France still tries to curl troops around the flank, going in behind the enemy's lines. Now, over here, Bagration still has not really had too much of a fight on their hands. They still have quite a strong army. So they're going to keep trying to push here. They are almost behind the French attack. You see Prussia actually issuing out and uh, trying to stop this French attack. Um, just like that guard unit from Russia did break and France is trying to follow it up. Try to break them in. This is just both sides are fighting very viciously trying to get an edge on the other. Here we go. Another assault column by France. Potentially going up. Russia, and they are holding for now, guys, but this is not going to look too good. Look at this French line that's just on the plate. Russia's in huge, huge trouble, guys. This is so many troops. This, these two cab units may have to do something, but Russia's about to get charged in the flank. In fact, it does like they're getting charged. Yeah, still engaging in the town. Russia even getting engaged over here, and now we have the attack. By France going for the guns, going for this left flank. How are the coalition going to win this? Bagration is going to have to make some huge plays if they want to win. I don't know. I mean, there's a nice reserve line coming up. Russia not looking too good on this side. They do have their grenadiers up in the front lines. Nice flanking volleys here. And also pushing up with cavalry on the flank. France doesn't really have a lot here. So Bagration can start pushing on a very weak left flank of France. But over on this side, you can see Russia still just constantly having troops break. And more and more troops just getting surrounded as France just... Man, this, this flank is just reaching so far. And the coalition can't really react to it. And now you have cavalry charging in against Prussia. You can not form square. The building's not going to give a very effective charge for France, though. And it was like Prussia maybe has saved a little bit of that fight. Now they have now reinforcing cavalry, charging and engaging some of this French line infantry. So now they can start pushing up with migration. Starting to pull back. France definitely pulling back here on this left side. Trying to push maybe the right side up. And once again, man, they're just going for the bayonet constantly. Constant melee. This, this whole side is just constantly just losing. They can't afford to keep taking these losses, but they are. You can see they're getting attacked from two sides now. Uh, this left side's about to collapse into nothing. Bagration does have his artillery. You can see he's setting up a reserve line here to kind of... I mean, when you look at it, the lines have almost totally shifted. The line is just Bagration and, and uh, the seven-pointer. I think it's Rochelle. 
Uh, but they are now in this line. The city kind of splitting their army in two a little bit. As France is going to start pushing in here. And the rest of Duke Torov, minus his cavalry, seems to be gone. France victoriously now is going to push up. They are probably a little tired. Their troops, I would guarantee you, are kind of tired. So, um, yeah. That's that's uh, the Russian general, Dutorov, now dead. But we do have Bagration hot on the heels of some of the French units trying to pull back to their own lines. We still have some Prussian cavalry here. In fact, I think they're going for a general. They're not going to make it, but uh, there's still some cav way over here on the flank. My force is truly way back. And uh, we may even have Russia. It looks like Russia is going to try closing in swiftly as possible. Closing in as France obviously shifting all his troops over to this left side to receive immigration's assault. We have killed that I'm assuming General this Prussia side. is uh, gone. Away. Maybe they're the ones that crashed. But I don't think their crash would cause a lot of happen. Unless it was mid-battle, like mid-bayonet charge they lost. But I didn't see anybody that, anybody's crash that has actually affected this game. Both sides just, I mean, Bagration had an amazing initial charge against France over here, which is broken, but then also Prussia holding this line, they had a square, so they had actually a kind of angle here, and France just went straight into it. I think this is where that whole angle was, and they just lost big. Uh, we have Prussia getting baited at charges here. Once again, that melee going against the coalition. They're sending more musketeers to try to back up this fight. Yeah, like I said, he does have a portion of his army. I'm assuming they may try to put some pressure on the French. But you see France has shifted back. Now, the one advantage the coalition has over here is their troops are, for the most part, especially immigration, very fresh. And I imagine the French are not as fresh. They've been fighting in a melee fight for quite some time. That may work out in advantage, a huge advantage for the coalition. But you can see they are not hesitating. They're sending in some grenadiers immediately into the Prussian line. Now we do have Russia pushing up to try to support that fight. We may even be wanting to get into some melee here. You can see this is where the the focus point for the French is right now. They're focusing down Prussia as best they can. Russia is definitely going to have to get engaged into this fight pretty quick here. Um, if he wants to make a save. But he has nice reserve lines. Man, yeah, he's getting charged on the flank, but he can react with some grenadiers. Um, ooh, wow, he has a nice reserve line. But you can see he's actually pulling them back just a little bit. He has his general up close, Bagration. Also the Prussian general up close as well to maybe get a rally off. Um, he's going to take this fight. He has to take this fight back. And uh, he's not pushing up the left flank, so France is pushing heavily. I'm surprised maybe he's appealing some troops off to maybe attack, at least divert some of the tension, but I'm sure he's very busy trying to multitask. Oh, nice. He actually managed to get that musketeer out of there, sending in a new must fresh musketeer, and you can see pulling back his lines so that he can have some distance between himself oh, man, and his I'm French line, sending in some grenadiers against the French. However, this left flank definitely hovering, getting very danger close to his line. He can send those crossiers maybe in to stop that massive French advance. At the same time, pulling back this right side as the French are trying to, yeah, just get around, just encircle this army here. I'm assuming he's sending the crossiers. Oh, this could be a very game-changing charge. Oh man, he's hitting some really, really good quality French infantry right here. I suspect he's gonna pull them out though, as that's just a stopping. Yeah, it's a stopping. And you can see he only lost two French lines to that whole initial charge. And he has pulled back. He has the horse artillery still out in the flank. He still has some cavalry as well. The cross here is cycling in again to stop this French advance, trying to save his lines. Nothing's still happening over here. <laughs> and, man, he actually managed to save most of his army there. That was All a very running, excellent tactical retreat um, to avoid getting it just totally closed in on by the French. Who, who knows how many armies this is? This could be three French armies, probably two more likely, though. 
He does have light infantry that did get caught in melee. Unfortunately, they're probably going to lose that fight. Um, he does have artillery set up right here, so he is basically being defensive, has this five guns pounding away at this French line and just some units in reserve. These units may actually come in clutch later on. That's six lines plus two skirms. And he may be actually exhausting his French army and hopefully, you know, taking out some of the French slowly but surely. Wait, he got them away? Wow. That is insane. He may still lose these two. We'll see. We're, we're, we'll see. This is a very precarious position the, Fred, the coalition are on. The Russians definitely in a precarious position. It looks like there's tons of French still over here. Yeah, they have they have seven lines plus a skirm plus another line here against the six. However, you can see Bagration is actually pushing over. It's time to start thinking, you know, that in the next 10, 15, 20 minutes, you're gonna start wanting to defend LOCs. Uh, Bagration setting up maybe some more artillery. I'm not totally sure here. He does have the cav advantage right now, um, as France. Any cab they have is sitting way over here, so he can at least defend his own troops for the moment. Now, we do have some French cavalry, maybe some some light, some hussars, or some chasseur cheval that are starting to push up towards this advance. And at the same time, guys, the reason he is not stopping, he's trying to get away from his, his units that have routed already. That is a debuff you do not want. Routing troops nearby your, your troops that have not broken yet that will cause them to waver or at least start having some morale issues for your own troops. You want to get away from that um, and then fight, you know? I mean, also not the greatest positions yet. He's still going to probably fall back more, try to find some terrain, maybe even curve towards this way. This is a nice defensive position if he can hold it, um, especially since he seems to be shifting over the rest of his army. However, it does look like France is advancing. Oh, this actually may be a crash. I think France maybe has the crash. That's maybe what they're talking about. Maybe it wasn't a coalition crash. It was a Imperial crash. Um, just this small army that was right here with the cavalry and infantry. Although, they, to be fair, they weren't doing anything over here. So, um, But still, that's probably why he's shifting reinforcements over. That's probably what he's talking about. Um, so the French definitely have the up up hand up until that crash maybe France still hot in the heels of Russia that's a, this has been a tough fight for them you see France even pushing troops across to maybe intercept the rest of Bagration's army so they're splitting up their forces as well I'm not sure if these guys actually have crashed because they're standing here shooting. That's not a very AI thing to do. This looks like AI. So these three, or maybe not. I can't tell. Our men are running, sir. Dang, they shredded up the skirm unit. But over here, Bagration may actually have an opportunity to push some troops in behind the French advance as France is trying to push on the rest of Bagration's army. Of course, clearly, that's a beautiful spot for them. You see, he's pushing up more and more infantry here. The French even leaving a rear guard, though, to deal with it so they can't push up on this line. Ooh, but is actually doing some real damage here against the French as they push up. This horse artillery is going to stand its ground for the moment. Kind of curious if uh, he's going to send the cavalry in to defend that artillery piece. Here we go. A nice charge here by the heavy cavalry to save the artillery piece. Ooh, France is actually going to run troops out to uh, stop to get a nice counter volley here. 
Maybe pull his artillery back. He's running up some grenadiers as well. You see here France closed in once again, but All Russia, he pulled back his troops immediately. And, I mean, he's committing some troops here. He even has grenadiers and cavalry on the flank here. So he actually has the potential to totally flank this line here. This could be the chance that he was uh, looking for. Or on this side, France is trying to deal with it, the split-up aggression army in the town. But actually, France seems to be uh, not on the greatest of uh, foots here. As we have some Dragoons that are trying to break more and more French. Think about it, guys. Every French infantry that breaks is one less that Bagration is dealing with. Although he did take some losses there with the Musketeer and maybe a Dragoon. Anyway, cross here may actually break. That's a nice target. Oh, we have France going in for the melee here. France definitely taking a commitment here, going in for the town. There's an LOC uh, that Russia has, though, and they have a couple of units, so this is going to be a bit of a tough one. Oh, man, nice counter volley. Look at this shooting almost point blank while this unit's still stuck in melee. That's not going to go well for France. You can see they actually are taking losses. I mean, LOC shooting them in the flank and all that. And uh, Russia now has made it towards a highly defensible position. We'll see if they can keep it. As France just seems to be slowly running out of forces here. Over on this side, um, it does appear that the French attack... Maybe these French troops are just going for LOCs at this point. Maybe they're going to start taking LOCs and see if they can win that way. But this French attack definitely seems to be petering out. I mean, the, out, the terrain working so well in favor of the Russians. And Russia playing a very strategic running away game where they fight for a second, try to take out a French unit, then run away. He still has his cavalry, so he has that Dragoon. His crosshair did break, unfortunately. Um, but he's holding this part of the town quite well. Elao is definitely still in coalition hands. Just comes down to this fight, basically, guys. This fight right here seems to be um, a bit out of favor of the French at this point in time. Units in nice volleys by this cabinier. Ooh. Oh, France going for the bayonet. But look at this flanking fire here. Breaking a nice French unit. Now France is getting absolutely outflanked by some uh, Prussians and Russians here. France trying to take part of this hill at least. And it looks like the rest of the French are now going to go straight for Elau. Trying to, try to beat the rest of the Russians back to the town. Try to take them out piecemeal. But I think the coalition actually have some very good, uh, very good positioning at this moment. However, I do see France trying to push in on the flank. Oh man, with France getting in behind. But Russia turning around, just point blank falling, and then Russia going in with some infantry. This is going to be a tough one for France to actually win now. But they got to push in with their infantry while the coalition is distracted. Because now the coalition can turn around and start shooting them in the face. Uh, we'll see though. France may actually finally get an edge here with the coalition tied up in melee in multiple locations. Over well, here, nothing really happening, so we're not going to worry about that side for now. There we go, France makes that commitment into melee here. The coalition definitely getting very tired.
cavalry trying to support this army. The rest of Aggression's army has pushed up, though, and may actually be able to do some real good here in this melee. This all or nothing for the French at this point. Like I'm seeing a lot of redlining by the French. Oh, did a general maybe inspire? Alright, so actually, Russia just had a huge break. They lost three regiments, plus Prussia losing the Grenadiers. France only losing one or two or three units there. And France seems to be committing another attack here. With some grenadiers. Now it's, I think, Bagration's turn to try to countercharge here. He's sending those grenadiers out again. France pulling back. This, this is turning into just a bit of a small little thing. So it's not a whole lot of troops. I'm going to start fast forwarding here. It's like France is pulling back here. This may be... Like I said, the time to consider LOCs, and if we consider the LOCs, um, Elao does have the most LOCs, which it does look like the Coalition has the majority of that, so um, the Coalition's going to win this, unless the French take a bunch of towns that they can take. You know, this is what, one, two, three, four, and there's one, two, three, four. Actually, there'd be a tie. Technically, like, technically. Um, either way, France has managed to get across. Russia actually pulling back so they don't get outflanked here. They can use this LOC, which I think he's going to do. And they can just force the French to fight near LOCs the entire time. Pulling troops back here. He does have this Grenadier unit set up to actually intercept so that these troops cannot even get into the house without dealing with the Grenadiers first. But you can see more French troops now making their appearance here. Man, what a bloody field. Look at this. Some wraps all the way around this entire map. Oh, they did take this one. So we have the French trying to go for this LOC here. I was trying to flank around here, but I think the, the coalition will have that. Sent in some Prussian grenadiers as well. And the, I think the I think the French have very few troops left. They will probably make some commitment here. It looks like they even the Russians going in for a bayonet charge, clearing out whatever was stuck around the other side. Um Yeah, France may be trying to make one last commitment to this side, but you can see they're pretty weak here. I mean, Bagration could probably push out and just surround and destroy this French army, um, in which case then it would be over. Yeah, you can see they're actually breaking just to just getting shot out. And there we go. There goes Russia going in for the melee. small fast forward here and uh 
We'll then get the end results and see, you know, who had what and what killed where. Um, yeah. I said maybe there was a crash. Maybe there was a crash. I actually, it was pretty hard to tell until near the end. There's a French army over here that just started running off. I'm, may I'm assuming that's when the crash was, we have but killed their generals. Uh, I don't now know if that would, must break. I don't know if that would have changed the course of the game. There's two people who I thought maybe could have crashed, one on each side of the team. Um, but those people actually didn't crash. They just got hit really hard in the beginning. So one of the Prussians got hit really hard in the beginning, didn't get to deal a lot of damage. And one of the French who got hit over here didn't get to do a lot of damage. I thought one of them crashes because there wasn't a lot of kills. But that just that was just, you know, getting hit really hard. The shock and all that just broke, mass routed. Which I've been there, done that. It's a terrible feeling. When you look, you're like, man, I only got 200 kills. That's because somebody just rolled through you super fast. Uh, but there's like one troop left here, so I'm just going to skip to the end so we can see the results of this battle. All right, guys, so as you can see here, we have Data L, who sent it in playing as Bagration. Uh, definitely got the most kills there with 2849 for his kills. Um, I mean, he got almost as many kills as he had men, but he took half casualties at least. Uh, but then you have the other players here. So you have Bear with 730 kills. You have Hubs, who played the Prussia. He was one with almost 500 kills. He probably, I, I'm assuming he's the one who got hit really hard in the very beginning. Uh, that melee just absolutely annihilated him, unfortunately. And then you have Ghost Warrior with 819 for the kills. And the other side is Fabs with 1169. You have Smitty with 2499. Belfort with 2034. And then Arm, who's the one who got attacked in the very beginning, with 306 for the kills. Like I said, sometimes you just end up being that unfortunate guy who gets caught and just hammered really hard by uh, the enemy. Especially considering he was a 12-pointer that rolled over him. Um, you know, there's only so much you can do. But anyway, guys, that'll be the battle today. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, as always, you guys have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, and I'll catch you all in another video.